Uh, nice to see everyone. Uh, it's, uh, it's very heartwarming to see so many uh, software people in my hometown, Tartu. Um, and yeah, as, uh, as I was already introduced, I'll do it again. My name is Rain, and I'm the co-founder of Fractory, and essentially Fractory is a company uh, in manufacturing and software sector that uh, makes manufacturing more efficient and sustainable. And uh, today um, I'm going to talk uh, about the personal story of, uh, of mine, how I fell in love with an ugly beast. And, uh, and some of you might already know that uh, the ugly beast for me uh, was manufacturing. And hopefully uh, during this, uh, this talk, uh, I can, uh, or you will recognize some maybe learning point, points or something similar in your life. But to get started, uh, we have to go back to the very beginning. So, me being around uh, six years old. And uh, back then, I remember I used to spend a lot of time in my grandparents' house. Um, and they had all these uh, old radios and clocks and everything like that laying around. And I remember I was really curious about these technical gadgets. Uh, I always wanted to find a screwdriver to crack them open, see what's inside, understand how they work, and try to put them back together. Obviously, uh, when you put them back together, they don't work anymore because you're still six years old and you don't know anything about these things. But, but I remember this was kind of the, maybe the very first curiosity I had about engineering and manufacturing without myself maybe even noticing it. And I remember my grandmother always used to say that, uh, that I'm going to be an engineer because I like to do this kind of stuff and break their things and so on. Maybe it was just a bad kid, but who knows. But yeah, uh, going forward, so now I'm 14 already, and, um, and I'm in, uh, basically in school. It's, it's around like seventh, eighth grade, something like that. And, and basically, at that point, uh, we are going to this thing called industrial arts class. So uh, in Estonia, you might know it as the Õpetus. Uh, it's the kind of the first place that uh, you get familiar with, uh, with engineering and manufacturing. This is the place where you should kind of, it should spark your interest to become an engineer and go into manufacturing. Um, but for us, I remember the classrooms still very well. Um, it was kind of, it was dirty. Everything was from Soviet times. Uh, this was the projector uh, that our student, uh, teacher used uh, to show us these uh, movies in the beginning of, uh, of every, every year these safety movies, and it's basically, it's the same projector with the slides, it, it, it puts it on a screen, and, and you can see like these old, old Soviet times, like safety things, don't put your finger in between these things and stuff, and, and you're like, this is something from last century, I don't really kind of need to know about it. Like, I remember we had these, uh, these uh, uh, different machines, like in the beginning in the arts class, you, you start doing like birdhouse and stuff, but later, as you get better, you go to even like metalworking, and the, and this uh, green machine there, basically, that's what we had to work with. Again, you're like on the next uh, in the next classroom, you have this computer. This can do all kinds of cool shit. You can send messages to your friends. You can play mafia games online, whatever. So, I think kind of naturally, your interest sparks that one. So, you don't. You don't want to learn manufacturing, you don't care about it. And, and I think for me, for a quite a long time, this was the last place I thought about manufacturing. And this is the last memory that got um, imprinted into my brain, essentially. Uh, but now, uh, moving forward again. So I'm already much older. So I went to the right side, from your left, to the computer side. I've gone to university, studied software engineering. I worked in, manufa in software, sorry, about like five, six years. Uh, I've been in a couple of small companies, but I kind of wanted to, to learn how to build like beautiful software, scalable software, uh, understand how these uh, complicated distributed systems work. And, um, and I found this company called Skype. Most of you know it. It's kind of the one of the most famous things in Estonia. 
if you ask a random stranger what is Estonia, that's Estonia. Uh, and I also thought that that's something for me. Uh, back then, uh, there weren't so many startups. There were some already, but, uh, but the startup scene wasn't as active as, uh, as now. And, uh, and I remember like, uh, going to these interviews and everything, and, and like, you have all these awesome things with, uh, with these uh, big companies. It's, it's free food, it's good salary, gaming room, gym, all these cool perks that you can have. And, uh, and I think I also, in addition to, to this uh, uh, image of Skype, I also got a bit distracted of, of, about all of these things. Like, obviously, I want to go work there. But, uh, but then when I started working in Skype, it was, it was already bought by Microsoft, actually. And, uh, and it wasn't exactly, I think, what I needed at the time. Uh, because uh, uh, the innovation wasn't like that anymore. Uh, I think the innovation in voice over IP and, and, and chat had happened. So I was maybe a bit late to the party. So even though the developers, everyone were really smart and the systems were cool, and we were doing uh, Scrum in development, all the fancy words you can like do sprints and stuff. Uh, but uh, the business side of it, or, or the general flow, was in waterfalls. So I remember wanting to like I, we built a service, a microservice, in like five or six days, and uh, then you want to get it live. Well, no, uh, you have to go to the information security team, the operation security team, uh, and in the end, you spend like month or two to get something live. So I started thinking, like, is this something for me? Uh, I'm still young. I want to I wanna build shit. I want to see people using my software. I want to see the feedback, talk to the customers. So maybe this is not my optimal value. And, and looking back at it, um, I think this is one of the, one of the things uh, for all of you guys also who are maybe young, thinking what to do, or even older, it doesn't matter. Uh, when you're looking for a, for a new job or a new opportunity, think what are the values that you are looking for. It might be salary, that's totally OK. Or it might be the gaming room, that's fine. But think before you start applying, what are the actual values that you're looking for and optimize for them. Ask questions about those things. Uh, try to find the perfect fit for yourself. All right, going forward again. So um, I'll let you guys think for 10 seconds what these pi three pictures have in common. And if you figure it out, find me later at the after party. I will buy you a drink. And since I cannot really check uh, if it's right or wrong, then please don't lie. I don't have enough money to get you all drunk. So be honest. Um, now that you have some time to think, I'll tell how they're similar. So in the middle, you can see this place called Naive. Naive uh, is uh, one of really well-known bars in Tartu. And it used to be a super cool place, place we would spend maybe too many weekends at with our friends. And, uh, and for me also, uh, Naive was, um, was a place uh, where things started changing. So uh, as you might remember, uh, manufacturing for me was still a beast. I didn't know anything about it. But, but I think uh, this is the place where, where the first change happened. So that guy, that's called Martin. Martin is uh, my current CEO and co-founder. And I remember I was at Naive uh, drinking a beer with my friends. And then Martin walked in the door. I know Martin for, I don't know, I think 15, 16 years, something like that. And, and Martin walked through the door, and then Martin had uh, a better experience with, uh, with the beast, with the manufacturing. Uh, he actually was an industrial engineer, uh, had been studying industrial engineer, and work, was working in a company that was building, uh, basically designing LNG gas stations, so where you can tank the liquid gas in your uh, car. And Martin, uh, knowing that I'm a software developer, came to me and started talking about this, this huge problem in, in manufacturing. Like, He's an engineer, and, and, and he's been going to these startup events already and pitching. And, and, uh, and there is like, this problem where he tries to order stuff, and it's super slow. And he needs to order a lot of stuff. And people like the manufacturers are very slow to respond. Uh, sometimes you cannot manufacture what you need to. Um, 
there are all these different problems in it. So, so Martin started talking about like how they have a team and they have a solution, but they also have a small problem. They don't know how to read these CAD files. They, they need to get the information out of these CAD files to essentially build the pricing of it. So the idea that Martin had was that uh, we built this system, you put the file in, you get the price back, you order it, and it's done. It saves you days, essentially. So I was like, OK, OK. Manufacturing sounds quite boring, but, but Martin a bit sparked my interest. Like, because I, I, at Skype, I was a bit bored, so, so this was like the, the catch for me, like something interesting there. And then yeah, Martin like, started explaining uh, how this stuff works. So, so essentially, there is this machine that cuts metal. It's called a laser cutter. And I was like, oh, whoa, whoa, hold on, what the fuck? What was a laser cutter? It's like, this is the image that sparked in my mind. Star Wars, it's lasers, laser cutting. So only connection I had, essentially. I had no idea what the laser cutter was. And, um, and yeah, this is uh, just for you, everyone. So you would know what laser cutting is, and you wouldn't be me thinking of Star Wars. This is a laser cutter. This is what it does. It cuts out uh, metal. It can cut the paper, uh, cardboard, anything, basically. And this is not even sped up. This is regular speed. It can go even quicker. So you can do all kinds of amazing things with it. You can do tables. You can build uh, boxes for your computer, whatever comes to mind, essentially. Uh, so yeah, next time you think about laser cutter, don't think Star Wars, think this. Now. Uh, I woke up in the morning uh, after an eve, of course, having this, uh, I guess, quite okay hangover. So, um, but with the hangover came something else, and it was curiosity. So, as a developer, when someone tells you they cannot do something, your first thought is like, "Come on, man! <laughs> of course it can be done." So, so what I did first is obviously I went to YouTube and started Googling laser cutting and then looked at those videos for an hour or so because it seemed awesome for me. Like I remembered this uh, green machine still and now I saw this. So it was, it was quite amazing. And, um, and then I started talking to Martin like, uh, OK, tell me a bit more about the problem. And then the Martin uh, uh, sent me this file. So essentially, they look something like this. Uh, so this was the source of the problem. We need to get this information out of it. And, uh, and what I did is uh, I have Hangover. I'm naturally quite a lazy person, so I'm not going to build the software myself initially. So I started Googling around. I, I found uh, something in GitHub. It was written in Node.js. And it uh, took this file and gave me back some basic information. So then I did some simple algorithms to tie this information together, and voila. We had the length of all these contours, so Martin was, yeah, that can, we can use to price this stuff. I was like, OK, cool. And uh, Martin then um, asked me to join their team uh, to build this new world-changing company. I was like, yeah, let's do it. <laughs> and anyway, going forward from there, uh, we now have a team. Uh, the team was, I think, in the beginning, around five people. Uh, but what we don't have a lot is, is time, because um, when, you, when you work your regular hours, you go like um, eight hours, basically. Then doing sof something after that, it's quite hard, because, sorry, drinking, uh, because your brain is already quite dead, so anything you do after that, uh, you cannot get your maximum output. And anyone who has built a company or tried to build a company, you know that in the beginning you need 12 hours to 14 hours, whatever. You need a lot of time to, to build something. And uh, the same was for us. Uh, but luckily, this uh, accelerator called the uh, Startup Wise Guys found us and, and asked, us, asked us to apply to the accelerator. What they essentially do is they give you 20,000 of cash, uh, and they give you like this onboarding experience to the ent uh, like startup world, essentially. So in three months, they teach you everything that you should know or get started to build a company, like uh, how to do business, how to find customers, how to build an MVP with, I don't know, uh, one month, basically, how to test it, 
and so on. So basically everything that you should need as a team to get started. And in Startup Wise Guys, the complicated part was that 120 companies applied there. So we were one of us, one of them. And, um, and luckily, uh, we were in invited to pitch uh, uh, to Riga. That's where the accelerator took place. So a bit away from Estonia. And uh, again, fortunately, out of 25 pitches, we were selected to be one of 10 to participate in this accelerator. So what do you have to do now? Uh, Startup Wise guys wrote us that uh, you need to be in Riga in two weeks. We were like, OK, we are still working somewhere. So what do you do? You go to your, uh, your bosses and say, can I quit in two weeks, please? And uh, we were lucky. We had good bosses. They knew that we wanted to do something, so they let us go. Uh, then you take three guys, uh, a car, uh, move all your shit to Riga, and uh, forgot about, forget about Estonia for a while. And, uh, and basically, uh, when I think back to it right now, it seemed like an easy choice. Back then, I mean, it's, it's still, it's, it, it seems scary because you kind of have to leave everything you know for some time. You have to leave your good job, the high paying salary. That's gone. And you don't know for how long. Uh, but uh, for us, I think it was essentially quite easy uh, because uh, we we're three young guys, 26 years old. We didn't have much. We didn't have children. Uh, we didn't have, I think, even mortgages. Maybe one of us had. The uh, only thing I had is, was one car. So I sold that one. Uh, I can buy a new one later, essentially. Uh, but when I think back of it, there were like more complicated cases. So I would like to give kudos to those, I guess. There, I remember there was a guy who moved to Riga who had three young children, the whole family, basically. You moved to Riga, you're given 20,000 euros. So that's, that's going to last, I don't know, maybe at that time, maybe if you spread it out, uh, maybe you'll get eight months or something. But that's also minimum salary. So I think there are a lot uh, people who have a harder time than we had. But yeah, basically, here are some feel-good pictures also. So in the background, you can see when we earned our first money, 26 euros. We're really happy. Uh, and the smaller picture is essentially uh, when we were driving back from Riga and Startup Wise guys wrote us an email that you've been accepted to, uh, to the accelerator. And uh, they basically asked if you want to go there. The only thing that we sent back was this picture, me at the Rungu Bagar, if someone has been there, we bought a champagne to celebrate, it's a children's champagne, and that's the photo we sent back. But yeah, what to essentially learn from this? Uh, so again, uh, you're, most of you are young, and even if you're not young, that doesn't matter. You're, most of you are software developers who are working in IT. So your LinkedIn probably looks like something of a reverse Tinder. You have people hitting on you constantly. Uh, so what it essentially means is that you can find a job anywhere with a really good salary, good benefits, and probably a really interesting one. But if you are thinking right now or in the future that uh, you want to start something, but you don't know uh, if it's something that, uh, that you are cut out for, don't be afraid. Just do it, be like Shia, just do it, and, uh, and you won't regret this, because I think one of the best memories for me are from that time, uh, because you learn a lot of things, as I mentioned, like entrepreneurship, how to build things fast, how to break things fast, and so on. And even if you don't succeed, you can take these skills and memories uh, to your next things, essentially. So don't be afraid. OK. so. For me, it was easy. Uh, in a sense, I had a lot of luck. Uh, I, I found Martin in Naive, or, or Martin found me. So uh, I fell in love with manufacturing. And, uh, and, I, 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 and thanks to Martin, I saw that manufacturing is not the machine on the left, but the, one, the, blue, the white one on the right. So, so basically, that is a really awesome sector. But all of you don't have a Martin, so I'll do this preaching myself. Uh, basically, manufacturing, uh, in the factory side, everything is quite automated. You have the super cool machines, as you saw before in the video. Uh, but uh, the same thing isn't quite there on the office side. So in Estonia, for example, manufacturing is, uh, 
is basic the number one export sector, uh, and uh, we are actually decreasing in, de decreasing in profitability uh, because uh, manufacturing is very inefficient. The salaries go, go up. We don't have enough people, uh, but all the processes on the office side are super manual, basically. I've seen all kinds of funny things, like the best thing I remember, we went to visit the customer, and these guys were printing out uh, these drawings that I showed before on PDFs and measuring them with a ruler to find out the diameter and everything, to basically the bounding box of it to calculate the price. So that is how manual it is. And maybe uh, a real example from what we do essentially is, is, uh, is uh, if you want to order like 100 parts of something uh, and you want to get the comparative quote to understand who you want to choose, you will, let's say, send it out to three manufacturers. Each of them uh, will take nine hours to go through these files. There is a person at every company opening these files one by one, looking if they can manufacture it, if they can price it. And they will spend all this time, but only one can win. So it's 18 hours of human time spent on nothing. Super inefficient. And there are a lot of other problems like that. So if you're thinking about, I don't know, making a company, you want to do something, uh, before you go essentially to, to another fintech, another payment solution, or, or, or trying to, I don't know, uh, do something with sales again. We have done that already. Estonia has very awesome companies who brought like banking to current century, like transferwise, sales process to the century, pipe drive, uh, but manufacturing needs your help. And uh, that's my ask to you. Before you start anything, go look into manufacturing and you might find something awesome to solve. All right, thank you. Uh, this was my story of how I fell in love with an ugly beast. And turns out that the beast wasn't the beast at all, but a beautiful prince. <laughs>